likely spot since the beginning of the news. For they have come, the famous, the unknown, the wealthy, and the poor, to a narrow tie. The breeze is blowing under an almost cloudless sky. The thermometer on the shaded side of the telegraph tower said 69 degrees, a world the beginning of a new era. Suddenly, the attention of the crowd is focused on two men, J.H. Strobridge, construction to and superintendent of the Central Pacific, and his counterpart in the Union Pacific, S.B. Reed, as they carry to its ceremonial position a tie made of highly polished laurel wood. And then Edgar Mills, a wealthy banker and friend of the Central Pacific Railroad official, steps forward and signals for silence. And so a nation as well as the spectators gathered here away as a drama of men's hopes and prayers and dreams begin to unfold the 10th of May, 1869. And you are here. From promontory to the country, bulletin, don't break the circuit. Keep quiet. When the last spike is driven, we will stay done. Gentlemen, on behalf of the officials of the Gulf Railroad, the Union Pacific, and the Central Pacific, you welcome. We are met today to commemorate the completion of a project which is a remarkable example of the vision the determination and the labor of thousands of men in the Union, which this day shall be consummated forever. We are assembled here to link the ends of the earth, to join the raw riches of the American West, finished products of the Industrial East. We also met today with mixed emotions, and in a combined effort and a common cause, the brains, the sweat and the muscle of thousands of men have joined together under the guidance of Almighty God. Hundreds of men gave their lives that we might stand here at this moment and share one with another this sacred occasion. A number of us, in addition to those who have reporters from some of America's territory other dignitary person, Bishop John Sharp, the railroad bishop, representing Governor Brigham Young. uniform band with its new instruments is from the Mormon Church 10th Ward in Salt Lake City. Of the most importance is a telegraph operator who will keep the whole United States informed of these proceedings as they transpire. He is Mr. W.N. Schilling, Western Union operator from the Ogden, Utah office. Infantry band and some of the men of the regiment. Listen thanks to our creator, three miles to be with us today. He is the Reverend John of Pittsburgh. From promontory to the country, bulletin, hats off, prayers being offered. Our Father and God, and our Father's God, God of creation and God of providence, thou art also the God of all mercies and blessings. Keep in mind with his powers of invention and his capacity of success. And the gold of the West. O oh, glorious to completion. We consecrate this highway for the good of thy people, O oh God, and pour thy blessings upon it, and upon thy people everywhere, that peace may flow into them as a gentle stream, and that this mighty enterprise may be unto us as the Atlantic of thy strength and the Pacific of thy love. Through Jesus the Redeemer. And now I should like to introduce three of the men who will drive some of the last necessary spikes. They are W.H. Nottingham, President of the Michigan Southern and Lakeshore Railroad, and two United States Commissioners, Mr. J.W. Haynes and Mr. William Sherman. Gentlemen, if you will please. Well done, gentlemen. To introduce a fellow resident of Sacramento, 
Dr. H. W. Harkins. We present to Dr. Thomas C. Durant of the Union Pacific Railroad and Governor Leland Stanford of the Central Pacific Railroad, two railroad spikes. Governor Stanford and Dr. Durant will then place these spikes, are not ordinary spikes. Ladies and gentlemen, these are golden spikes made from pure California gold. Dr. Harkins. Gentlemen of the Pacific Railroad, they're with us. The last spike needed to unite the Atlantic and the Pacific by a new line of trade and commerce is about to be driven to its place. The West have come together. Never since history commenced her record of human events has man been called upon to meet the completion of a work so magnificent in contemplation and so marvelous in execution. California, within whose borders and by whose citizens the Pacific Railroad was inaugurated, desires to express her appreciation, the vast importance to her and her sister states of the great enterprise which by joint action is about to be consummated. From her mines of gold she has forged the spike. From her laurel woods she has hewn a tie, which is about to unite her in closer fellowship with her sisters of the Atlantic. The last tie and the last spike. And with them accept the hopes and wishes of her people that the success of your enterprise will not stop short of its brightest promise. This spike was a gift by Mr. Frank Marriott, publisher of the San Francisco Newsletter. With this spike, the San Francisco Newsletter offers its homage to the great work which has joined the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean this month, May 1869. I'd like to draw your attention to this fight. Francisco. As this railroad unites the two great oceans of the world. Dr. Hardness, and that's Mr. F.A. Tridel, United States Railroad Commissioner and candidate for the great state of Nevada. He will present a spike of pure silver from the famed Comstock load on behalf of the people of Nevada. Mr. Tridel. From the iron from the east, the gold from the west, Nevada offers her Lake of, uh, Lake of Silver to span the continent ocean. Yeah. He was kind enough to delay his journey to his new headquarters of the Arizona Territory. Governor. Iron, clad in silver, and crowned with gold. Arizona presents its offering to the enterprise that banded the continent and dictated the pathway to commerce. Thank you, Governor Safford. And now, friends, it is not only my duty, but my honor and privilege to introduce a man of vision, a man of courage, a humanitarian, and one who is highly esteemed by those of us who call him our friend. He is a Californian whose far-sightedness has contributed in large measure to the Central Pacific Railroad, Governor Leland Stanford. The Pacific Railroad companies thank you for these gold and silver tokens of your appreciation of the importance of our enterprise to the material interests of the whole country, north, south, east, and west. These gifts shall receive a spinning place in the superstructure of our road. But before driving the last bike in the completion of the Pacific Railroad, allow me to express the hope that the great importance might be finished. The day is not necessary 
to accommodate the commerce and travel which they think transit across this country. The train will move only in one way on each track. In conclusion, I might add, we hope to do that which is now impossible on long lines. Transport cheap, heavy, and coarse products for all differences and living rates to the train. I think to his quarter in his absence and in the absence of the president of the Union Pacific Railroad, Mr. Oliver Ames, we have asked General Grenville Dodge, chief engineer of the Union Pacific Railroad, to represent his railroad with a few remarks. General Dodge. Mr. Bill, thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, Senator from Missouri, Thomas Hart Benton, once proposed that a giant statue of Christopher Columbus be built on the tallest peak of the Rocky Mountains, pointing westward and denoting this as a great route across our continent. A fact. This, I say, this is the way to India. Okay. And the entire world have been waiting. The driving of the last spike is at hand point, we wish to commend both railroad companies and their workers for their hard work and efficiency in bringing this monumental undertaking to its successful fruition in a record six and one half years to the ceremony, to the, to the venture. In the form of overplated spike ball will be Mr. L. W. Cole. Michigan Southern and Lakeshore, uh, excuse me, Pacific Express Union Express Company. Governor Stanford and Dr. Durant, now that he is so, now that he is feeling better. <laughs> we'll make a few ceremonial taps on the precious metal spikes. Mr. Cole. Thank you. Railroad officials, honored guests, friends, it is the privilege of the officers and workers of the symbolic of our good wishes. regular iron railroad spike that can be driven with the mall. Both the spike and the mall have been wired to the transcontinental telegraph line so that people everywhere can hear the blows as the spike is driven. As Mr. Schilling gives the signal driven it will happen across our country. Junction 1,086 miles west of the Missouri River, 690 miles east of Sacramento City, California. Pacific Railroad, John Duff, 
Union Railroad.